Ladles and jelly spoons, welcome back to Badger Works. Today, this. <laughs> yes, this is a new airbrush, but it is an airbrush with a difference. And today we're going to take a look at it and see how good it is. So, let's get on with it. So yes, this is indeed a new airbrush, or an airbrush system, as it says. Um, yeah. Uh, so, let me get it out of the box and show you, because there's something kind of interesting about this. So here is our box. Uh, we have an airbrush, we have some cups, and we have a really, really bad instruction manual. We'll get to that in a minute. But we also have this. Yes, it is pink. And yes, I bought the pink one because the pink one, for some reason, was four pounds cheaper than the black one. Whatever. But yes, this is a self-contained airbrush system. So what we have is the airbrush and the cups and everything else, but we also have a built-in compressor <laughs> let's uh let's go through this and see what we've got um so to start with we have the brush itself it's uh it's a single action uh brush gravity fed um the air blows through it constantly and then, so that when you work the the lever all you're doing is controlling the flow of paint okay so the paint the air flows through it constantly we'll show you i'll show you that in a minute uh we also have a number of, of cups paint cups so we've got, oh, ah. we've got this small cup, which is, I should imagine, the one we'll be using the most. Um, so that screws on the top here. Now, the interesting thing is, this has a lid, but the lid, oddly enough, is threaded. I don't know why. That's just going to get full of paint. But anyway, it, it's threaded. But that's fine. So we've got that one. I'll say that's the one we'll probably be using most. Then we have... This clear plastic cup, which is obviously for, you know, larger amounts of paint, that's fine. Um, I don't know exactly how much it's supposed to hold. It has marks on it, but it doesn't say what they are. So anyway, but that's beside the point. You've got that. Uh, <laughs> and then we also have <laughs> this monstrosity. <laughs> size of that. Um, and I can see there could be uses for this, but the thing is for me, once you put this on, you have this massive weight, and that's with no paint in it, just hanging off the top of the brush. So yeah, I mean, I dare say there might be a use for it, but I very much doubt we'll ever use this, but still. Uh, we also have a cable to charge the thing, but most importantly, we have this. Now let me put all this to one side for a minute. So this is the compressor. It's USB powered. Uh, you've got your charging port there and a power button. And what you do is you screw your airbrush onto the top of this thing, he says, trying desperately not to cross thread it, because it is a very fine thread. Get on there. I think it's like eighth BSP or something like that. Um, it's not the greatest fitting. I don't know if you can actually see that, but as you tighten it up, the O-ring starts to squeeze out the side, so, you know. But it seems to work all right. So basically, the way this works is you press the power button, and it starts blowing air out. And like I said, you use the trigger to control the flow of paint. Now, I, I don't know what pressure this is blowing at, it claims 30 PSI. It doesn't feel like 30 PSI, but it does have adjustment. So if you press the button again, and listen, it slows down and so we do actually have three pressure levels. Now, I don't know what these pressure levels are. Like I said, the top one claims to be 30 PSI, but I don't think it is. Um, but what we're going to do is if we do, you know, normally when I do videos, I tell you what air pressure I'm spraying at. Yeah. <laughs> so what I shall do is instead of using the actual pressure numbers, I shall mark it down as high, medium or low. Um, and then hold the button and it switches off. Uh, so, yes, there you go. It, it's got some gravity to it, but it's not terribly heavy. Um, as I said, it charges via USB. One thing that's slightly annoying that I found um, and as I said, I haven't actually sprayed this yet, I should, I should mention. Um, I, I put some isopropyl alcohol through it just to make sure it worked. Um, but I haven't actually painted anything with this yet. So this is the big test. But one thing I have found is if you plug 
uh, a cable in to charge it, you can't switch it on. So if the battery goes flat, you basically can't use it again until you've charged it, which is not the end of the world, um, but you know, it's worth knowing. Uh, but yes, so this is our new airbrush. <laughs> so we kind of need something to test it on, don't we? And I have the very thing, wait there. So to test it, we're gonna use this. Uh, this is an Airfix starter kit, it's a Spitfire. Um, because I thought it might be interesting. It's the kind of thing you've seen me build before. You know how I paint these things. So it'll be interesting to see how well it works out. Um, so we're not gonna focus too much on the actual model and the building of the model, but we're gonna focus more on the painting of it. So what I'm gonna do is, and I'm gonna do this off camera just to make things a bit quicker, is I'm gonna start doing some pre-assembly on this, getting the, the cockpit and all that together, uh, and then priming everything. And I'm gonna prime everything the same way I always do uh, with this um, high coat, gray primer uh, and what we'll do is we'll come back when we're ready to start painting so this should be hilarious <laughs> oh uh, just before we go on I said I was going to mention the instructions <laughs> the upgraded version product instruction manual so you open it to the first page and it starts at troubleshooting step number five <laughs> um, yeah, th this, these instructions are absolutely awful. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, it's got some information in it, but yeah, it's kind of, uh, anyway, <laughs> let's, let's see if we can paint something with this thing. Right, so I've got this thing assembled now, and um, the first thing you'll notice about this is it's quite awkward to hold. Um, you, you kind of have to hold it sort of like this, or if you're left-handed, like that. Um, but that's not the end of the world because you're not actually pushing down on the trigger, you're, you're only moving it backwards and forwards. Um, so I don't think it's too bad, but we'll, we'll give it a go, we'll see what happens. Uh, what I wanna do first of all is I'm just gonna put some uh, isopropyl alcohol through it just to make sure it's clean um, and also that it's you know ready to go. So we'll just pop some in here a little bit in the cup. We don't need too much. And, uh, oh, turn it on I suppose would be useful. So we'll turn it on just to full power. There we go. I don't know how loud this is gonna sound to the camera. If it's really loud and annoying, I do apologize. Um, so, That is working. Hang on a second. Right, I don't know if this will work. I've just put a piece of black paper because I want to see if you can see the spray. Oh, there you go. And let's... So there you go. So it's definitely working. So let's try putting some paint in it and see what happens. Right, we're going to start off with this uh, XF1 flat black and do the wheels and the propeller. So normally I do this off camera, but I will do this here so you can see what I'm doing. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some paint in the cup. We don't need a massive amount. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight nine ten right so put ten drops of paint in there this is just to see if the thing even works right and I'll do my usual 50 50 mix so we'll do one two three four five six seven eight nine ten drops of uh, Tamiya X20 thinner right let's mix that up Right, we'll just use a bit of tissue and see if this thing will actually spray. Oh, it's doing something. Wow. <laughs> All right, let's see if we can try and spray something. <laughs> Why am I so excited about this? All right, let's see what happens. <laughs> it's 
actually working. Well, it was. <laughs> oh, it works. It's not great, but it works. Oh, that's brilliant. All right, let's do the wheels. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, all right, and the other one. Well, I'd say that's quite a successful first test. Right, let's, uh, let's move on. I'll clean this out and we'll go on from there. Right, so now I've loaded up with this um, XF71 cockpit green and we'll do the interior and the, and the wheel wells and things like that. Right, that's filled up. Let's uh, give it a go. So what I've got here is uh, part of the um, cockpit interior. That really doesn't bad, work badly at all. Yeah, quite happy with that. All right, let's try the... Um interior of the fuselage. Hmm. This really is not terrible at all. do the insides of the wings. And last, the inside of the landing struts. <laughs> Working really well. Uh, one more thing I want to do while we've got this green loaded. I want to paint the uh, the green on the wheels. Uh, I want to paint the, paint the wheels green. So um, 
I know this is not really the scope of this video, but you've seen me do this before. Basically, this is a circle template. Let me just take that off for a second. And what you do, uh, in order to avoid having to mask the wheels, is if you just find the wheel, the, the hole that's the same size as the wheel, which I think in this case is going to be... Uh, I would say four millimetres. So if you look through there, you can see that just the wheel is showing. And we'll just put this bit of tape over each side to uh, basically keep the paint off my fingers more than anything. And then what you do is you just hold that in place like that. Turn your airbrush on. And just give it a spray. And there we have one perfectly painted wheel. <laughs> uh, right, onwards. Right, in case you were wondering how I've been cleaning this out between colours, um, I've been doing it much the same as I do with any other airbrush. So what I've been doing is just take some uh, isopropyl alcohol, put it in the cup, wipe the cup out first, um, and just put some IPA in there. But what you can also do with this is you can actually, because I'm using this pipette, is actually get that down into that bore and just give it a little, just pump it lightly. Stop laughing at the back. Uh, and that just kind of cleans out the, uh, the paint in, that's still in the nozzle. And then um, you can basically just spray this IPA through it and that will clean it out more than sufficiently uh, between coats. However, because I'm now going to do some assembly, I want to put this aside to one for a minute. Uh, and there's a couple of things that I think are going to be worth doing. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to put it on charge, just to keep it charged up. Uh, it does also say in the instructions that you should let this cool down periodically. And it is getting, it's not hot, but you can feel it's warm. Because obviously there's, a, there's a, something in there pumping the air. And that's it's probably um, a motorised air pump. Um, I'll see if I can find one because I've got some somewhere. If I can find one, I'll show you what they look like. Um, it's basically an electric motor with a little pump on the end and the motor drives the pump and it sucks air in, compresses it and blows it out. It's like a little electric turbocharger, effectively. Um, but that's probably what's in here. I'm not going to take it apart because I don't want to break it. Uh, but what I'm also going to do is I'm going to give this a bit of a clean out just to make sure it doesn't get gummed up while it's sitting. So let me uh, get this IPA out of it, and then we'll take this apart and see what it looks like inside. Right, so let's give this a bit of a clean. Uh, let's take this cup off, because we don't need that on there at the moment. And as suspected, I don't know if you can see that in there, those threads have already started to fill up with paint, so, but you know, what are you gonna do? Uh, I don't think it'll be too much of a problem. Um, so, uh, to take the needle off, this basically disassembles just like a normal airbrush for the most part. Um, take the back off. This is lovely and plastic, so go easy with it because it feels like that thread could rip off in a second. Uh, and then we'll take the needle out. This is always good to do with any airbrush. Um, if you're putting it down for a few minutes, just give the needle a wipe because quite often there'll still be paint on them. And what happens is if it dries in the brush, it'll cluck, like gum it up. Now let's take the nozzle off. Right, that's a bit grotty in there. Let's just get a cotton bud with some isopropyl alcohol in it and just give that a wipe. Yeah, that is pretty gross in there. In fact, I think we'll try and get down this end as well. That's not terrible. All right, that's not too bad. And right, how does this... Oh. Oh, no, that's interesting. So this is basically very, very similar to my Harder and Steenbeck Evolution. Um, let me show you. Uh, where is it? There it is. If I take the nozzle off of this, 
should have sort of needed that first, but never mind. It's basically a very, very similar design. That is really interesting. I like that. Okay, fair enough. Let's uh, put this back together. Sorry, Evolution, not today. <laughs> uh, but yes, which means that we can clean this the same way I clean my Evolution. Uh, where is it? There it is. Um, I use these little cheap interdental tool brushes. Uh, tool brushes? Tooth brushes. Uh, you can get these from eBay or Amazon or anywhere. Um, just dunk it in some IPA and shove it in. I'm not going to tell you again. And that will basically clean that out very nicely. Like that, you see? Just give it a wipe over. Put this back together. Uh, does that bit come off? I don't know if that. I can't even tell if this end part is actually actually comes off or not, or whether it's just molded to look like it will come off. I can't see a join, and it doesn't want to undo. I think that is, I think that little needle protector on the end is literally part of the whole thing, and they've just put that knurling on there to make it look like a regular airbrush. <laughs> That's brilliant. I love it. Uh, right, let's stick this back in here. I haven't tried putting anything solvent-based through this yet because, quite frankly, I have no clue what these O-rings and things are made of. I suspect they are probably made of something not particularly good. They're probably just plain rubber, uh, which, if they are... If you put anything cellulose or lacquer base through it, it will basically um, just destroy those destroy those O-rings. So we'll leave that for now. All right, let's put this cup back on. And uh, yeah. So far, I'm actually really impressed with this, um, considering it was just over £20. Admittedly, it was on sale. But yeah, this is working really well so far. Um, so let me do some assembly. And again, I'll do that off camera. Um, basically, we'll come back and we'll start painting the exterior of the thing. So back in a sec. Actually, just before I go, um, I mentioned this was getting warm. Uh, I just took this off while I was cleaning the airbrush. And in the time it's taken to clean the airbrush, this has got noticeably cooler. So I don't think you need to leave it for too long. But like I say, I'll put this on charge while we're, um, while we're putting the rest of it together. Right, so here it is all put together. Uh, and I've given it a coat of um, grey primer. Uh, there's a few like little mold lines and things, but I'm not really that worried about that. This is more about what it looks like when it's painted. Uh, and speaking of which, the next step is this uh, XF14 JA Grey uh, for the underside of the wings and fuselage. Right, so I've got the airbrush loaded up. Let's turn it on and see what happens. Well, that seems to be going on all right. It's not bad at all, does it? Very good. Right, we'll let that dry and we'll mask it up. Right, now that's all masked up, I shall hit the top of it with some XF52 flat earth. Stop laughing at the back. Hmm. 
going on quite well. I'll get the rest of it done, we'll see what it looks like. Right, now that's dry, we're gonna do some mottling with our old friend XF55 deck tan. So what I've done, or what I'm going to do is turn that down to the minimum setting. This is quite heavily thinned. Now, let's see how this works. Oh, that works quite well. <laughs> well, that's working very well. Uh, let me get all this done and then uh, we'll see what it looks like. Right, that has worked very well on that. I'm very happy with that. So what we're going to do now is go back to our uh, flat earth, but uh, thinner mix this time. So it's about 80-20 um, about thinner to paint. So, and we're going back to high power. And the trick with this is don't put too much paint on. Um, put it on very thin, wait for it to dry, and you'll see, you'll see already that that mottling is starting to show through again. So just add very thin coats, let them dry in between until you get the look you want. I think that doesn't look too bad. So uh, I'll dry this off quickly with a hairdryer. Then we'll mask it up and put the green on. Right, so I've masked this up now using some of this uh, MIG masking putty. I did a video on this stuff before and ways you can uh, acquire it or acquire something similar much cheaper. I'll put a link to that in the, in the thing. Um, but now we're going to spray our green. And for that, we're using XF81 uh, Dark Green 2. Just like that. There we go. Uh, I'll do the other half and then uh, we'll mottle it up the same as before. Right, and now we'll mottle the green the same as we did the brown. And I know I've talked about this before, but if any of you are wondering why I'm doing this, it's basically just to introduce some tonal variations. Um, so you don't just have a flat color. And also you see a lot of people like to darken the panel lines, whereas I find in a lot of cases, I prefer to highlight the, uh, the middle of the panel rather than darken the edge of the panel, if you see what I mean. I think one of these days I should do one of these and just do um, like half of it mottled and half of it just flat colours, just so you can see what I mean.
But I say this airbrush is has been a pleasant surprise. I would honestly say if you are thinking about getting into airbrushing but you're not sure you know how to go about it or what kit to buy or even if you even want to do it something like this I think would be a really good like starter option and as I mentioned before this is not you know I'm not this isn't sponsored or anything no one's paying me to say this I hope you've all realized by now that if I give you an opinion it's my own opinion I've had various companies and organizations try and buy reviews and stuff like that and it's just like no you're all right <laughs> probably leave it um but there you go so that's that we'll uh throw another quick coat of the um dark green two on and uh see what it looks like Right, there we go. We'll let that dry for a minute and then we'll uh, take the putty off and see how we've done. Right, let's get this putty and stuff off and see how we've done. at all does it uh, let's take this tape off the underside as well oh blimey I've asked that well didn't I <laughs> oh well I, I, I have been a bit slapdash with this because it was more about the actual like putting of the paint on than anything else but uh, yeah I think it's done all right uh, let's get that out of there as well. In case you're wondering what this is, I'm pulling out. It's just sponge, you know, like stuff you get for the, you know, doing the dishes and whatnot. Uh, it works really well for stuff like that. But, uh, yeah, I think that looks rather good. For what it is um yeah i mean i'm going to finish this off but i don't think we really need to worry too much about the rest of it um it's going to have you know varnish and decals and all the rest of it on it but as far as the actual paint painting goes with the airbrush um that's pretty much it for now uh so yes i'm going to wrap it up at the end but i just want to talk about this for a minute first i have to say I have been very, very, very impressed with this airbrush. Um, considering it was less than £25, and you can pay more than that for a, just an airbrush. Uh, I mean, I've got airbrushes that cost three, four, five times what this did, and they're not as good. Um, now, again, to reiterate, no one's paying me for this. This is not sponsored or anything. I bought this with my own money because I was genuinely curious to see. I thought it was going to be awful. And I have been very, very pleasantly proven wrong. Uh, and I will say, if you are thinking about getting into airbrushing and you're a bit nervous about spending money and what kit to buy and all the rest of it, you could do far worse than get yourself one of these and see how you get on with it. So there's also, you can also get kits where they have a hose between the airbrush and the thing, um, which might be better for you. I mean, it's like all these things, shop around, see what you can get. I'll put a link to where I got this one from in the in the comments, um, in the description rather. But, you know, shop around. You may get it cheaper. Um, or you might not like the colour. But then, as a wise man once said, real men have no reason to fear pink. But there you go. Um, yes, very, very, very impressed with this. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll finish this off. So basically, the next thing is uh, a gloss coat which will be out of a rattle can. It'll be um, 
this high coat uh, lacquer. And again, not a sponsor, but I always use these high coat paints because they're great. Um, so that, then the decals, then another coat of that, and a little bit of weathering, then a matte coat, and then I think um, we'll be done with it. So let me do all of that off camera, just get it done, and then we'll do a final summary and wrap up at the end. And here is our finished article. Uh, I think this has come out quite well. I'm, I'm quite pleased with this. I mean, obviously it's only a basic starter kit, but it looks pretty good. And that is in no small part due to this airbrush. Uh, and I've said it before and I will say it again, I have been very pleasantly surprised with this brush. I think it's done a remarkably good job considering what it is. And as I mentioned previously, if you are in the market for an airbrush and you're not sure what to get or anything like that, you could do far worse than to get one of these and give it a try. Um, as I said, this is not sponsored or anything like that. I bought this because I was curious to see how well it did and I have been very pleasantly surprised by it. So, uh, yeah, hopefully this video will be of interest to a few of you. I know that a lot of people are, are, are sort of thinking about airbrushing and things like that. So hopefully this has given you a few pointers. Uh, I'd like to thank my top tier patrons, uh, Howard, Amy and Hawaii Clive O for their continued support. And of course, all my other patrons and channel members and all you lovely people at home. It's very much appreciated. And I will see you on the next video. Thanks very much for watching. Cheers. Bye.